What's going on, fuckers? This is Kevin the Full Metal Ginger, and yeah, Metal Albums of the Month time again. Well, that fucking snuck up on me quick. But I'm actually getting it done, so that's great. Uh, yeah, after last week's goddamn abomination, it's really nice to do something normal for once. Because, uh, yeah, any of y'all, whoever saw that video, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. But yeah, it's just, I'm going to keep my clothes on for a while. I'm going to try not to get naked, and you know, I'm sure all of you will benefit as well as I will. So... Yeah, uh, Metal Albums of the Month for August. Um, I guess I kind of do a theme with these. You know, I know the outdoor elements tend to dictate how I'm listening for the most part. And, uh, you know, summer's coming to an end. And I'm, normally I hate summer, but it's just kind of, you know, well, it's almost over. So maybe I'll try and enjoy it. You know, and here in the South, you know, you've got your sweet tea on the porch. you got everyone goes to the lake. You know, we got a lot of outdoor shit going on, which, you know, everybody does. But, you know. It's always fucking hot and humid down here, and I don't know, I just kind of listen to music to try to beat the heat, I guess you could say, but you know, it's it's coming to an end, it's almost over, and uh, yeah, that's kind of the theme we have going on with this one, just like late summer party music, uh, really energetic stuff. So yeah, we'll go ahead and jump right into them. Uh, listening to Abysmal Lord, Disciples of the Inferno, I'm sure everyone knows this by now, I mean goddamn, uh, probably one of my favorite albums out of 2015, awesome fucking Black Death, out of Nolan's. All right, so we have a uh, shit, three CDs, a uh, record, and a tape to listen to or to check out. That's way too fucking loud. I feel like I'm yelling at you. So uh, yeah, first one we have a fucking kick ass. Uh, it's like a really bluesy sludge album, and this is really fun to listen to. Uh, this is the self-titled uh, full length from Atala. I guess it's Atala, Atala, Atala. Their debut full length uh, came out in 2014. Uh, it was actually originally released uh, independently on vinyl, and then uh, Shadow Kingdom came out in put. Yeah, uh, let's see, they had a cassette version, a this CD version, and I think a digital copy. And this is all like two years later, so this is the 2016 version. Um, but like I said, it was all released originally independently. Yeah, and this is a. Uh, so this is a couple of years old now at this point, technically, you know, this being just the re-release. Um, this is a really interesting fucking album, man. It's uh, it's typical sludge, but it's a little more blues-based than I'm used to listening to. Uh, it's really got a nice 70s rock vibe. And what I really enjoy about it, it's, it usually lets the music speak for itself. You know, there's very little in the way of vocals. So the vocals aren't really leading the album. It just kind of goes at its own pace. But it's very, very fucking hypnotic. Very um, groove-laden. I mean, the hooks on here are fucking fantastic. Just a really nice fucking album. Um, yeah, uh, the vocals are really kind of... They're not really dirty. They're, they're clean vocals, but they're almost a shouted vocals. Uh, it's just, um, so what little you do have in vocals, it just kind of le lets it, it be substance more than, you know, kind of the focal point of the album. So, I mean, it's, it's produced really well. It's, uh, gives a vibe of being in a small bar watching them live. It's just a really interesting album. I really enjoyed it. Uh, artwork, man, gotta love the fucking cover. Got that acid trip kind of vibe, which, you know, it's stoner sludge, that type of music. Uh, just kind of lets, I, I like an album that, tries to emphasize the music with the cover art and I think they did a really good job here um, inside not too much going on Let's see there what I do like about it is it's just lyrics and photos stuff like this and what makes this really nice is um, there's just no gimmicks they're just saying hey we're just a band you know nothing fucking crazy no theme just hey we just play music uh, I really think that's a really cool uh, Really cool thing to do where a lot of bands, you know, you got a theme or, you know, you look a certain way, the album looks a certain way. It's just like, no, here, we're just a band. And that just kind of sums it all up right there. Um, this is just really an album that begs to be heard on vinyl, and I really wish I had it on vinyl. Uh, that's definitely something I need to get around to picking up at some point. It just it gives you that old school vibe, like I said, with all the hooks, the 70s hard rock. Uh, it's just a really old school type of feeling when you listen to this, and... I don't know, just, it's no frills, no bells, no whistles. It's just good tunes, and I really, really enjoy this album. I think you all will as well. 
Um, as usual, links will be in the description because I'm I suck at describing music. I'm actually trying to do a more uh, thorough, detailed description of all this because I suck ass at doing this kind of thing. So hopefully, you will get my message a little bit better. Next up, we have a record. Uh, one of my favorite bands, actually, uh, North Carolina band. So I'm definitely gonna support my state's music. It's just I'm that guy. I'm a local guy. I want to see our scene grow. So. But uh, here we have Leviathan, or sorry, Goliathan from Weed Eater. Leviathan, I'm an idiot. Um, yeah, just uh, pretty much everything that Weed Eater puts out, it's this is pretty much the same goddamn thing. Not in a bad way. I mean, you know, I really enjoy Weed Eater, but uh, this is their 2015. And I believe this is their fifth full length. Uh, band's been around a good lot. Good little while. Uh, based out of Wilmington, out east of North Carolina. Uh, just absolute legends of the sludge genre. Uh, Dixie Dave Collins played in Bongzilla there for, or not Bongzilla, um, Buzz Oven there for a long time. Still goes on the road with them from time to time, so that's really cool. Uh, yeah, weed, weed metal as they call it, and they've absolutely put their stamp on this type of music. And uh, like I said, man, it's, it's really pretty much typical of what Weed Eater puts out. There's no real differences. There are a couple of uh, oddities on this album. Uh, you have like the Southern Chapel church organ song and processional, which just imagine like a being in church and hearing an organ, and then he's talking about hating your guts and shit. And then you have uh, battered and fried, which reminds me of like a campfire song with you know a banjo. That's just a really cool, fucking weird thing to have on here. Uh, favorites on here are definitely going to be like. Uh, uh, Title track, Goliathan, uh, Cain and Abler, Claw the Sloth is ab absolutely outstanding. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just really groove laden as usual. They really kill you with the hook, which if you know me, I'm a fucking sucker for the goddamn hook. And uh, yeah, they really put this out with this album. It's a fantastic album. Like all their releases, I, I don't think Weed Eaters ever put out a bad album. So uh, just more of the same, but not in a bad way. It's kind of like Cannibal Corpse. So, you know, they keep putting out good albums. They're not necessarily any different, but it's still good music. Uh, in terms of the artwork, man, I really don't like it at all. I really don't, man. I just don't think it fits their vibe. Um, you've got all these fucking battle scenes going on. And I really like the art for, like, uh, Injustice for All, or Injustice for Y'all. Uh, 16 Tons was cool. Uh, Jason the Dragon. But you have God Luck and Good Speed was not much going on there, but it's still better than this, I think. I don't know. I just don't think it fits their you know, sludgy, doom-laden kind of vibe, but, you know, really energetic, really hook-laden, but I don't know, that's just me, man. I, I just think those other albums really presented well on the cover art. I do like that it's a gatefold. Uh, the record, I believe, is just black vinyl. Yeah, it's just black, but, you know, you got the cover art as the label, so nothing really there to show. But overall, um... Just to, I mean, even with the departure of their uh, longtime drummer Keith Kirkham, I mean that they don't lay back and they don't uh, they don't let down on this album at all. I feel uh, Travis Owen did an outstanding job as a replacement drummer, and uh, even when you go look at their live videos, man, his stage presence is outstanding. So, yeah, I mean, overall another good burner. Uh, Weed Eater doesn't disappoint for me. Uh, excellent sludge metal. Uh, this next one. Fucking outstanding, man. This is such a fun album. Uh, I could listen to this night and day, day and night, whatever, man. This is one of my favorites that I have in the whole collection. Just a really awesome, outstanding album. This is Wastelander with War Drive. Uh, it's their 2008 debut. Uh, the band's from Lansing, Michigan, I believe. Uh, and this one is the 2014 re release through uh, Planet Metal, and I believe Planet Metal put it out uh, originally anyway. So, you know, whatever. Not that that's a bad thing, I just put it all out at one time, you know, re-release it, I guess, if you ran out of copies or whatever. I don't know if their original release was limited or anything, so that might be why they put it out again. Uh, the, there's a vinyl version, which is like on a olive green, I believe, vinyl, which would be really cool to have. But this is fucking amazing, man. Uh, it's a three-piece band that play like a, like a black thrash crust punk kind of fucking music man it's it's hard to describe and you know me i fucking suck at describing this type of music but this shit is fucking amazing man uh it really reminds me of bone hunter so if you if you're into bone hunter i think you'll really get into this 
you've got the whole apocalyptic vibe going on. Uh, it's just really thrashy, really, really fast, uh, really energetic. It gets you going. I mean, it doesn't let up. It's just fucking awesome. Again, another hook laden album. Lots of groove, lots of energy. Uh, easy to fucking headbang to, and it's just fun to listen to, man. Uh, there's a, like an old school 80s thrash vibe on it. Uh, again, lots of memorable hooks. Uh, great shouted vocals like the old school thrash bands would do. Uh, it's got a really rotten bass sound, which I love, and the production, man, just fucking floors me. You know, it's, it's like they're just sitting there recording it in a basement or a garage or something. It just feels really DIY. It feels pure, feels real. And yeah, I love it when I get an album like this where it's just no frills, you know, it's just here's the fucking music, here's the presentation. You know, that's just a great vibe to have. But like I said, you know, really in the vein of like Bone Hunter or maybe if you took Goat Penis and tuned down the tuned down the blackness a little bit and you know, increase the thrash, I think that'd be a good description there. Um love this I love this artwork man it's it's fantastic I think it's really kind of cheesy but it, you know in a way that just really makes it fucking stand out and it's really cool it's really bright and colorful so I love that about it um the whole presentation of the art is fucking kick ass the CD I assume that's how the vinyl looks and you also have a nod where it says ICBM you have a nod to their first demo when it came out uh the photos in here just here's what I love about this band man it's just again it's Kind of like the Atala CD. Just here we are. We're just a band. You know, you got live photos here and there. And the band just fucking crashing out listening to records and drinking beer. It's really fucking cool. I'm trying to find one that I really thought was awesome. Um, you know, like this one. He's got his Dirty more fucking beef stew and a bottle of Jim Bean. And records everywhere. How fucking awesome is that? But yeah, out, out fucking standing album. Uh, they really paint a presentation of just what the record sounds like. Just raw, thrashy, blackened with some punk influence here and there. Just a really outstanding album, man. So again, if you guys like Bone Hunter or you know Good Penis or something like that, I really think you'll dig this album. It's absolutely fantastic. Really a fun album. Can't go wrong. Ugh, can't go wrong listening to this. Oh, next one, man. This was an album that's so hard to describe. I was trying to come up with uh, things I could say about it, and it just, I don't know, man. It's just one of those things I guess you're just going to have to listen to on your own to kind of get a feel for it, but this is Circle of Dead Children with Psalm of the Grand Destroyer. Now, if you're not aware, uh, vocalist uh, Joe Horvath came up with the name, uh, the band name Circle of Dead Children, and apparently he had had a dream, or maybe was daydreaming or something about <clears throat> there was uh, all these dead kids lined up in a circle with their country's flag laying on top of them. And I don't know where that came from, but I think it's a really interesting concept. But that's just where that came from. <clears throat> God damn, I should have got some water. But band plays a really interesting uh, fusion of uh, brutal death metal and grindcore. Uh, they're based out of Philadelphia, or not Philadelphia, somewhere in Pennsylvania. I can't remember where, but. Yeah, man, this is almost like a crossover style. Um, I mean, they really blend the brutal death metal and the grindcore very well. It's it's really a seamless fusion. Um, it's it's kind of hard to determine where one begins and one ends, or vice versa. Um, I don't know, man. It's just it's really intense, really grindy, but really brutal. Really hits you over the head, and it's fast as shit. You got your short songs, your long songs. It's just kind of all over the place, but in a really cool way. Um, Joe's vocal range is really nice. I mean, you have the gurgling vocals like it's typical in Brutal Death, and but he can also hit those really high shrieks. You know, it's, it's really cool. Uh, it, yeah, I mean, it's just... I don't even know what to say about it. It's a very difficult album to review. Um, I guess if you... Like, for comparison, you can maybe say, like, um, Pig Destroyer or Cattle Decapitation might be good comparisons. But, I mean, really, they have kind of their own vibe going on. Uh, but yeah, really good. I mean, this came out on Willow Tip. I forgot to mention that uh, it's their 10, 2010 full length. It's actually their fourth full length. They've not been around. Well, they've been around since about '98 or so. Uh, yeah, man. Just it's hard to listen to. You guys are just gonna have to check it out. Um, love the fucking cover art. It's absolutely outstanding. And I love the uh, back of the CD or the back of the book here. 
I don't know if this person's being shot in the head and that's blood coming out or what. I mean, it's just, uh, I don't know, it just kind of makes you think. There's all kinds of different, um, all kinds of different things you could come up with with that. So I think that's really interesting. I really love that photo. Uh, the CD's really nice as well. Uh, on the back, I forgot to mention, that here's a warning label. It says, it's very small print. It says, uh, beware in three different languages. Uh, German, I think, Achtung and Koyado. I don't know. Fuck, I can't, you know, I don't speak other languages. But it says, this audio recording may contain backwards and or subliminal messages. Really fine right here. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. But that's what that says. Uh, not too much else, except for, um, you know, just your lyrics, which is typical. But I really think that's really cool, too. And uh, there's also a typo, I think. And apparently this appears on the vinyl as well. Uh, I don't know if it was just something they put in there on purpose, or if it was just some something somebody fucked up. But the sixth track on here, We Who Move with the Graven Worms. I'll try to get you to see it right there. Okay, in the booklet... And on the vinyl book, I guess, that comes with it, it says, uh, We Who Move With The Gravest Of Worms. So that's either a typo or part of that subliminal message and shit they put on there. So I don't know what to make of it, but I think it's fucking interesting. So there's uh, Circle of Dead Children, uh, Song of the Grand Destroyer. Guys, just go check it out, man. I'm fucking atrocious at describing music, so. All right, moving right along. Last one we have. Um, this is uh, another debut full length. Uh, one of my favorite bands bar none uh, like you know we're talking about getting into really energetic late summer shit and this is kind of like the precursor to fall everything's starting to get bleak but you know you still got the the dying summer i guess it's still kind of got its energy its own type of deal going on but this is uh from 2011 this is a uh, natarath nihilistic stench on cassette uh, yeah, Greek black metal, uh, I rant and rave about this band all the time, which no one else seems to want to fucking talk about, I don't fucking understand it, but, um, uh, yeah, this one was put out, uh, by Wolfsvier Records, um, yeah, they were originally, I think, I think original, okay, the original CD was released by Morbund, and then Wolfsvier kind of took over and then took this and put that out, which, you know, thanks to Eric Bauer, I found out how... Moribund is a big pile of shit. But they're with uh, Dracar Productions now, so I guess whatever. Um, yeah, uh, this this album is really cool in that it's a myriad of the band's current style and their influences. Man, there's actually a really a lot of punk influence on here, a lot of thrash influence. And uh, Nader Rath has always been known for their speed and their energy, and they're not really... I mean, they still maintain their dark vibe, their evil kind of bleak sound, but, you know, they also have their speed, their energy. It's really upbeat in a dark sort of way. And I guess unless you listen to it, you'll have no fucking clue what I'm talking about. But, I mean, it's it takes a lot of the sound that they perfected on this album, Circle of Pest, which is by far one of my favorite albums of all time. And, but you, you have the, the kind of style on Circle of Pest, but you also have their, I guess, the, probably their punk influences, their thrash influences, and you get it all kind of as a... Uh, combination on here so it's a really good album uh i still think circle of pest is by far the better one but yeah i mean uh, like you got the dark element which is typical of black metal but this band has like i said their energy their upbeat tempos their uh it's just their overall vibe which i think is really refreshing when you know a lot of people are going more raw and or ambient uh this kind of has a Slightly raw, slightly ambient, mostly energetic, dark vibe, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Uh, but yeah, like I said, it's on cassette. It's uh, limited to 100 copies. I have number 42 there, hand number copies. And uh, only the cassette comes with this sticker, which I have not decided whether or not I'm going to actually put it on anything. I probably won't. I'll just keep it in here. I really want to stick it on something, though. So I'm, I'm kind of tempted on that. It's not like I'm ever going to sell this shit anyway, so... Might as well. Uh, the tape is cool in that it is completely blank. It tells you nothing about which is side A and side B. So you kind of got to go figure that on your own, which I had to use YouTube to see what the actual first song sounded like. But, you know, I guess it worked out. Uh, the, jewel, or the jewel case, the J card is really nice. Uh, I love when you have these little tidbits in here that, you know, you don't see a lot of times. This one says uh, black metal propaganda against all. You've got a uh, nice big giant photo of the band, as you can see there. And I love this too, this little disclaimer. 
<clears throat> you have a, it says, uh, eternal hails to all the fucks out there that gave us strength and disgust with their parasitical lives and believers and all our allies who supported this madness. For all those who keep trying to save this shitball, the fucking planet, we say go fuck themselves, it's too late. Little things like that, man, just make it a little more uh, presentable, a little bit of a better package, a little bit better put together, but again, uh, really, all this stuff really energetic, uh, just kind of like the last gasp before summer dies and we get into more melancholic, bleak music, which I just tend to listen to in the fall, I'm just really a... I dictate my music listening a lot of the time based on the elements, but yeah, awesome album, uh, Naderath, Nihilistic Stench, great, fast, hook laden, twinges of punk, it's outstanding. So that's it for this one, you guys, uh, really appreciate all of you watching, um, if you want to go back and check out all the other Metal Albums of the Month episodes, I guess you'd say, uh, I'll leave a link in the description for that, I've got it all on a, uh, what do you call it, a, uh, playlist, so you can go check that out if you want, uh, Feel free to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. I'm always looking to talk to people or whatever. Don't get mad, you know, sometimes I get busy, you know, I can't always respond right away. Uh, there'll be a link if you want to subscribe. Really appreciate that. Uh, go check out me and my bud's uh, other channel. It's a comedy channel called uh, Calamity Squad. I'll leave a link for that in the description. Totally different from what we do here. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and uh, keep supporting extreme fucking metal.